Hello, and welcome to the Basic Rigging Principles course. Some of the topics that will be covered in this course include the proper selection and usage of knots, synthetic rope, wire rope, synthetic slings, hardware, blocks, and rigging. After viewing this course, you should be able to recognize proper rigging technique, choose the proper rigging materials, and complete the calculations that will determine the equipment used when making a lift. Before you start this course, you will want to make sure that you have a pen, paper, a calculator, and a piece of rope for knot tying practice. Good luck! There are several ways to tie a bowline knot. Shown here is one version. Start with the practice rope approximately 5 foot long and choose the end you will use to tie the knot. Hold the rope in front of you and make a loop about 18 inches from the end. When making the loop, ensure that the longer length of rope is on the bottom and that the free end of the rope is topside. Bring the short end of the rope up from underneath and through the small loop. Cross the end underneath the main rope and make a circle by coming over the main rope back into the small loop from the top. Insert the end of the rope through the loop from the top side. Tighten the knot making sure you have at least 6 inches of tail in the inside of the bowlin loop. You have just completed the bowlin. Bring the tail of the rope over the side of the bowlin loop and up through the center crossing under the rope tail as you come back out and away from the loop. This is a half hitch safety. The next slide shows an animation of this knot from start to finish and can be repeated several times as you practice this knot. Press the play button to view the knot tying process. Repeat the video until you feel comfortable with the tying of this knot. This is an example of a sling tag that you will see in the field. All sling manufacturers are regulated by industry standards that specify certain information must be on the sling tag. The information that must be included on each sling tag includes the manufacturer, the stock number, the construction material, and the working load limits of the sling in the single vertical, choked and basket configurations. On this sling tag, the working load limit in a single vertical configuration is 6,400 pounds. When used in a choke position, the working load limit is 4,800 pounds. And in a basket configuration, the working load limit is 12,800 pounds. Sling angle is defined as load plus force. When talking about sling angle, the load is always constant. The additional force comes from the angle at which the load is carried. As you can see in this first picture, the man is carrying a load of two buckets down at his side with no angle involved. In the second picture, the man is carrying the same load, but is now holding the buckets with arms lifted. In both pictures, the load has remained the same, but the force that is applied by the angle is increasing the energy the man must exert to carry the same amount of weight. The rigging equipment you use will bear both the load and the force, and these additional forces must be accounted for when selecting your rigging components. All hooks are designed for straight, inline loading. Once your load begins to get off-center, the capacity of your hook decreases. There are several ways that your load can get off-center. The most common are unequal load weights and different sling lengths. This is a very common problem in rigging. Notice how much the capacity of a hook decreases based on where the load is positioned. A quarter off the center point of the hook, the capacity of the hook decreases by 14%. Half off the center point of the hook, the capacity of the hook is decreased by 20%. Three quarters off the center point of the hook, the capacity of the hook is decreased by 30%. And point loading or tip loading results in a 60% decrease in capacity and should never be allowed. 